Let's take a look at a rolling problem and we'll use energy to solve this. We have an object of some unknown shape rolling along the ground at five meters per second and it encounters a hill and rolls up to the top of it and we want to figure out how fast is it going at the top of the hill. We've looked at problems where the object stopped on its way up the hill but we haven't looked at one like this. And so the hill is 1.6 meters high and at the top it's got a circular shape and so we'll also figure out what the normal force is on the object when it's at the top. But our main focus is going to be figuring out how fast it's going. We're told the object has a mass of 0.3 kilograms and its radius is much less than the radius of this circle and so that'll come into play uh, later in the problem. And we're told its rotational inertia is 5 sevenths mr squared. So we want to do conservation of energy. It does roll without slipping up the ramp. That means no energy is lost on its way up. And we write the initial energy equals the final. And we have translational kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy at the bottom. At the top we have gravitational potential and we have both kinds of kinetic, translational and rotational. And so that complicates this uh, somewhat over the ones where it stops on the way up. So we have one half mv initial squared plus one half i omega squared equals mgh plus one half mv final squared plus one half i omega final squared. But we know we can do some substitutions here. And so we have the rotational inertia 5 sevenths mr squared. We're going to put that in for i in both cases. And then we also know the linear velocity of the center of the object is equal to the angular velocity times the radius and so its angular velocity is the linear velocity over the radius and that's small r here so we substitute that into there and we do the same over here with omega final and so we get um, 5 sevenths mr squared times v squared over r squared over here and then also over here so we see a lot of simplification we can do here so let's do that and so the r squareds cancel, so if they didn't tell us what the radius was, which they didn't here, uh, we don't really need to know it. And then the m term cancels out because it's in every term here. And so we can uh, do some more simplification. We've pretty much got the physics done, the rest is just algebra. And so I end up with vi squared over 2 plus 5 fourteenths vi squared, because I have 5 over 2 times 7. And then over here on the, same, on the other side, I have a GH plus the same two terms for V final. And so it looks like we can simplify further using getting a common denominator here. And so I multiply this by 7 over 7, same over here. So I get 12 fourteenths over here and then 12 fourteenths there. And so we're getting pretty close here. And so I'm going to solve for V final. And so 12 fourteenths is the same as 6 sevenths v final squared. That equals 6 sevenths v initial squared. And I just subtracted gh from both sides. So I did a few steps of algebra there. And so solving finally for vf, I get it's the square root of vi squared minus 7 6 gh. And so verify that with your own algebra skills. And then h is 2 times r of this circle. You go back up here, the height was 2 times the radius or the diameter. And so we know what that is. It's going to be 1.6 meters. And so we can substitute that in and also put in uh, what VI is. And we know G is 9.8. And we find out it's going 2.6 meters per second. And so this is a challenging problem. If you can do this, you can handle any energy and rotation sort of problem. Uh, but there was a second part here. When it's going over the top, what is the normal force? It's going to feel lighter, just like a car driving over a hill. And so the normal force is not going to equal the weight. So how do we do that? Not that way. Uh, free body diagram. And so we have weight acting down, normal force straight up at the very top of the hill. And there is acceleration because it's following a circular path, so the acceleration is toward the center. And so some of the forces equal mA, where 
A is centripetal acceleration, and we know that's V squared over R. Technically, the radius is the radius of the circle plus the radius of the object. And so you could do that if they gave it to you. It's not a big deal. But they told us uh, little r is so much smaller than big R, we can ignore that. And so some of the forces equal ma. I have weight is positive, normal force negative, because acceleration is down. So I made down positive. That equals mv final squared over r. And solving for the normal force, I get 0.4 newtons. And so 0.4 newtons is much less than the weight of the object. It's actually a little bit faster, and it would lose contact uh, with the surface of the ramp. So give this one a try. Maybe uh, have it go a little slower and see what happens. It should uh, uh, go slower over the top, and the normal force should be greater.